This wasn't the next video I intended to make. Or at all, really, but something needed to be said since it seems people have lost their damn minds. Over the past couple of months, I've watched eBay listings for Optiplexes with i5 sell for as much as $180 and up, and I've seen people spend just as much for 6 gig 1060s, often not including shipping or tax. It's madness, people. Now, we all know the reason prices for anything computer-related have gone up, but there's no logical reason to be spending that much on an i5 Opti, or any 1060 for that matter. And no, this video isn't just me venting about asinine prices. No. No, this video is about giving you some alternatives. And really, the first step is to just stop looking at i5 Optis. That's what I've been doing since because at around an average of $160, our first alternative just makes more sense. A 7010 or 9010 with an i7-3770 is a better buy at a similar price point. And I know what I said in the buyer's guide video, but I never said that I wouldn't buy one. The word that I used was avoid. I'm saying that I wouldn't buy one at a similar price spec for spec. Also, while I showed in my CPU comparison that the i5-4690 can be similar in terms of gaming performance, as far as just frame rates are concerned, you have a lot more of a buffer zone on CPU usage, which is paramount with online gaming or if you're gaming outside of a perfect environment with next to nothing running in the background like I was. And while the i5 is going to tap out at around the 1060 for 1080p gaming, the 3770 is a much better option for something like a 1070 or even a 1080. The next closest option is to start looking at 7020s or 9020s with an i7. If you're actually considering spending around $180 or more on a 9020 with an i5 and 8 gigs of RAM, you're not far off from an i7 at that point. You can get them for between $200 and $250 with 16 gigs of RAM and a 1 to 2 terabyte hard drive. And I regularly see them go for around the lower end of that. I've also seen people pay that much for i5 systems simply because they had 16 gigs of RAM, an SSD, and a 1 terabyte hard drive. The irony is that minus the SSD, you're getting the same system except it has an i7. Also, as I said in the buyer's guide video, the upgrades are things that you can do yourself, usually for less money, but we'll dive more into that later. With our next option, we're still keeping it in the Dell family with the Precision line. Primarily the T1650 with an i7-3770, or the T1700 with a 4770 or 4790. They can also come with Xeons, which are worth considering since there are desktop socketed Xeons which can be less expensive than their i7 counterparts, and there are a lot more to choose from. However, that also means that the Xeon product stack is incredibly convoluted by comparison. So make sure to do some research if you want to go that route, which would be a video in and of itself. However, Intel Arc is a good place to start, and I'll leave a link down below. Anyways, there's not a lot of difference between the Precision Systems and the Optiplex. They use the same chassis and, as far as I can tell, the same motherboard. Also, sometimes they come with the same power supply. However, they also can come with an upgraded power supply over their Optiplex counterparts. And you can expect a video about those in the future. However, I find pricing is a lot more sporadic with these. I bought a T1700 recently for just under $250, and considering what it came with, it was an awesome deal. But I watched one that was similarly equipped, and recently, for over $400. Which is pretty stupid. Still, they're worth keeping an eye on, as you can possibly get one for a good deal, plus it just gives you more options. Now, my next suggestion isn't a Dell. It's an HP ProDesk 600 G1 or Elite Desk 800 G1. They're actually pretty similar to the Optiplex in a lot of ways, and the 600 G1 is similar to the 7020, and the 800 G1 is kind of like the 9020. They both use 4th gen CPUs, and there aren't any hardware compatibility issues when adding a GPU beyond the ones that really exist in any system such as physical space and power. Speaking of which, they even have what I would consider to be a slightly better power supply as they're 320 watts and they're made by Delta. At least the ones that I've seen, and Delta is a quality OEM. Yes, like the 9020 and 7020, they have proprietary connections, but adapters exist for those as well if you want to change out the power supply. However, these aren't immune to the price increase, but it seems they're a lot easier to find at decent prices over the Optiplex because perhaps maybe they've flown under the radar. And I know, there are more offerings from Dell, Acer, Lenovo, and so on that might be worth looking into, but I haven't had any hands-on time working on those or researching them, so unfortunately I wouldn't feel comfortable enough to make any recommendations one way or the other. 
Now the same things apply to the i7 systems as they do the i5 systems. There's a price point where you should just pass a system up and keep looking. I still stand by what I said in the buyer's guide last year and keep in mind these prices are USD based on eBay prices at the time of filming. I can't know what they go for in your area locally or how much they'll be even a month from now. It might be better, it might be worse. Anyways, I wouldn't pay more than about $120 for a system with an i5 all in. If you pay more, it better have bigger than a 500 gig hard drive and it better have at least eight gigs of RAM. For the i7s, I would stand under about $250 unless it's got an SSD and a two terabyte drive with more than 16 gigs of RAM. Now let's go back to adding your own upgrades rather than paying a huge markup for them. When you consider the average price of i5 systems right now with eight gigs of RAM, at around $160, give or take, adding an SSD can be as cheap as $20 for a brand new 120 gig drive. For the RAM, you're looking at around $10 per four gig module, and a one terabyte hard drive can easily be found for around $20 or less. So you add all that up and it comes out to a bit less than $250. Never mind the fact that you shouldn't be spending $160 on an i5 Opti anyways. And like I said earlier, spending close to $250 can easily be done with an i7 system with the same specs and adding an SSD. And if you were going to be installing your own GPU in it, doing these upgrades yourself isn't really any more difficult. Also, don't forget that in most states, online retailers, including eBay, are charging sales tax. So they're charging sales tax perpetually on used items every time that item is sold. Yeah, it's total BS. I know. So if you pay $180 for a system with an i5 plus shipping, you're gonna get to the cart and realize that system is costing you a bit more than you might've been thinking. Don't get caught up in bidding and forget that. Look at sold listings, decide what you're willing to pay and stick to it. Now, what about the 1060? Paying nearly $200 for a 1060 is just as insane when you can buy a 1070 for about the same price, generally between $200 and $220. No, you shouldn't be using a 1070 on the stock 290 watt power supply, but you could get a 1660 Super for around the same price or a little bit more that will. And it has similar performance to the 1070. You could go for a 1660 for about the same price as that 1060, or you could go for a 1650 Super, or you could even go all out for a 1660 Ti. They'll all run on the stock 290 watt power supply, so you'll want a dual SATA to PCI Express adapter for the 1660 Super or TI, since you're definitely gonna be exceeding the 54 watt rating of a single SATA power connection. On the AMD side, the 5500 XT is an option at around the same price, but I don't know if it can run on the stock power supply as I don't have one for testing. There also might be some 470s or 570s that are close to the reference clocks that might work, but once again, all I know is that the ones that I've tested definitely shouldn't be, as the power consumption on the Polaris cards is all over the place. That being said, at around $130, an RX 580 and a better power supply makes a lot more sense than buying a 1060 for around 180 bucks or more. The 580 is the faster card, and there are games where it can even trade blows with a 1070. There's no reason to be buying a 1060 at these price points. The 1060 isn't worth more than about $140 all in. That includes taxes, shipping, whatever. Regardless, you've got options and people really need to stop paying these prices unless you enjoy getting a bad deal, then by all means. So do you feel like you recently overpaid for your Optiplex, another OEM, or even a custom build? What about your GPU? Anyways, as usual, leave your questions and comments down below. Punch that sub button in the face and if you liked it, you know what to do. If you didn't, Maybe hit that dislike twice, you know, just to make sure. Anyways, I'll catch you with the next video, but in the meantime, maybe check out one of these other videos.